A short while ago, this small lake you see was a very different place. To be more accurate, there was no pond here at all until very recently. There were just hard pebbles lying on dry soil. But a very industrious group of workers struggled and made a great effort and built this pond. These industrious workers are the lovely animals known as beavers. Beavers live together as one big family. Their homes stand at one side of the pond that they build through their own efforts. The beaver's story begins with a male and a female beaver moving off to make a new home for themselves. The beaver pair will make their home on a river but first, they have to block the current. In order to do this, they employ the same method that man has been using for hundreds of years. They build a dam. In order to start building the dam, they first have to find materials. These consist of tree logs and branches. The beavers start working by going to forested areas beside the river. First, they eat a few leaves from the trees they find. their real task is to cut down the trees and push them over. This they do by gnawing expertly at the tree trunk. The interesting side of this is that they gnaw the trees in such a way that when the job comes to an end, the tree always falls in the direction of the water. The cutting and pushing over of the tree is still the job's crudest component. Later, the beavers split the tree up into its component branches and begin to form a dam by laying them out in front of the biggest log they have pushed over. And all this time, the only tools they use are their paws and their mouths. This work continues with great patience. Two beavers will cut down an average of 400 trees a year. They divide those trees further away from the dam into their separate branches and drag these to their dam. Beavers always use their front teeth when gnawing at the tree trunks or branches. As they use them all the time, these front teeth get worn down and break. But the beaver's jaw is created specially for this job. Its sharp front teeth keep growing just like a person's nails. The almighty God who created beavers 
also created their team for the job they would have to do. A beaver's body is created in such a way as to make it easier for them to swim in water. Their feet are webbed so they can easily displace water. Their tail is like a giant paddle, thanks to which they can swim comfortably in the water. The beavers continue their building with great zeal. They expertly arrange the large tree logs and the small branches and enlarge their dam a little more every day. As the dam grows, the water that collects in front of it grows higher. At the end of a few months of labor, a large pond forms behind the dam. As this pond grows, the beavers have to strengthen the dam and repair any cracks. They carry out this difficult task with great patience. The scene that emerges as the result of several months of hard work is, in a word, magnificent. A real dam resembling those made by man, has been formed. As you notice, beavers make their dams concave. The shape is not one picked by coincidence, because the form of a dam that best resists water pressure is a concave dam. In fact, the modern hydroelectric power dams of our day are also built concave. In short, beavers possess the construction knowledge which man attains over time from the first day of their lives. So, who gave them that knowledge? There is no doubt that a living creature cannot come by the ability to build a dam by chance. It cannot find the shape of a dam that will best resist water pressure by accident. And it cannot pass these abilities on to subsequent generations. It is the almighty God who gives the beaver the skills it possesses, who creates all living things and inspires what they do. The beaver's aim in constructing this giant dam is to have a still pond where they can make their nest. They also make their own nest while they're constructing the dam. The nest, or lodge as it's called, is at the edge of the pond, somewhere near the soil, 
The lodge, which looks like a pile of wood when seen from above, is in fact very well designed. The only way into the lodge is underwater. In order to get inside it, it is necessary to go through a hidden tunnel. This tunnel emerges into a concealed chamber above the level of the water. The beaver family lives in this dry and secure chamber. Some beavers build their lodge on two floors. The first floor is an entrance and living room. The upper floor, a dining room and bedroom. A beaver lodge has two underwater entrances and an air vent situated at the top. Inside this wonderful lodge, the beavers are not only protected from outside dangers, but also have a comfortable shelter. Their young open their eyes to the world inside the lodge. After they have grown a little, they begin to go outside with their parents and meet the world. When they are tired from swimming, what they like best is to climb onto their mother's backs. The little pond the beavers form can sometimes be as much as three or four meters deep. They do not actually need water as deep as this to build their nest. So in that case, why do they make such a deep pond? The answer to this question becomes apparent in winter. In winter, the surface of the water freezes and forms a rather thick layer of ice. If the pond is not deep enough, it will freeze right down to the bottom and the whole thing will turn into a block of ice and this would destroy the beaver's power of movement. The beavers, as if they know this, try to make the small lake as deep as possible. In this way, in winter, a thick layer of water remains under the ice. This is enough for the beavers to move and feed. When one considers this, it is clear that what beavers do is truly extraordinary. These small creatures manage to do something that most people could not do without special engineering training. So who is it that makes them do this? It is impossible to say that beavers are highly intelligent creatures. So how do these little animals plan their nests with special entrances to the water and air conditioning vents? How do they know how to make dams to the same concave design as the world's most modern hydroelectric dams? These tasks are way beyond these lovely little animals' intelligence and knowledge. It is clear that there is a great power which makes them do what they do. The Almighty God, who creates all living things and inspires their behavior, 
also inspires beavers to make their perfect dams and nests. God reveals his sovereignty over living things in a Quranic verse. Everyone in the heavens and earth belongs to him. All are submissive to him.